Welcome to my review and thoughts of the 1985 movie Kiss of the Spider Woman. So, in order to celebrate Pride, I will be doing one LGBTQ plus movie every week of June. Now, this movie is arguably about a trans person, and the movie does have empathy for the character who is potentially a trans person, though they are mistreated by some other characters. And you know, right now, trans people are having their rights stripped, their identities treated as inherently bad. So, you know, I wanted to start the month off with a movie about a trans person. And let's see, it, right now it's looking like the next three movies I do will be Disney Plus ones. Here in Western Europe, as far as I can tell, there are no fictional, and I don't review documentaries or shorts, movie on Disney Plus that it's that is centered on a trans person. I really hope they address this. I acknowledge that the West Side Story remake features a trans character. As far as I've been able to tell in my research, that character is not the lead. I don't currently intend on doing a video on that. One you know on Disney Plus, there is a Brie Larson hosted show about coming of age called Growing Up, and episode 5 is about a trans woman and the good and bad that she experienced. Honestly, that entire show is recommended. And yeah, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie I really loved. There will be some jokes in this uh, video, but I will not be making light of the struggles of LGBTQ plus people, and I will get into some serious topics. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for a review that talks about, oh, the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by later movies, because of that, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not that relevant today, and or it's different from the source material, so it sucks. Whether you agree with those assessments or not, this is not that review. I will briefly talk about how, you know, a, a lot has happened. You know, this movie is, what, 38 years old now. You know, there's there's been a lot of... A lot of progress, sadly, not as much as there should be in LGBTQ representation and understanding of what LGBTQ identities entail. I realize this video is long, I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. And I start the video with a review where I won't be spoiling anything. As soon as I'm in the review itself, please note the rest of the review will have lots of spoilers. And yes, and I will be discussing the ending. Now, the while I am an ally, I am not myself a part of the LGBTQ community. I wouldn't mind if I were, but I can't claim that I am, and as such, I'm not here to tell members of the community what to think or feel. I'm merely sharing my interpretation, because, sadly, I know from experience, my fellow cishet, some only listen to cishet, not members of the community. If any member of the community feel that I say something offensive in this video or any other video of mine, please let me know. I am completely open to editing that part out, and if it is a case where the whole video is bad, taking it down. And... Yeah, so the movie is rated R. It does feature some... Uh, L yeah, anti-LGBTQ words, but they're used to um, not to endorse those words or the hatred behind them, but to accurately represent the hatred that the the yeah that that is experienced by the character. And um, yeah, there are there is some violence it tends to be more implied and and you know fairly bloodless and let's see yeah and there are sexual references but not a lot of outright you know and i don't i don't think it's in order to kind of I don't know, I suppose maybe in part 
because the you know they wanted cishet people to like the movie as well and a lot of cishet people are freaked out by that even though they shouldn't be the the um, i think it is at least in part what they felt was right for the the film and i do think that it makes sense i th i think it would have been it, it would have gone against the the rest of the movie if it was very explicit with yeah and that brings us to let's see right i will just briefly say you know if you think you yourself have some anti lgbtq plus views you know try to educate yourself there's a lot of really great trans youtubers who you know explain things in in ways that is easy for us cishets to to understand i've personally learned a lot from them i, I suppose you know i i will very briefly um jesse gender is is great and let's see if i can get this right um so i don't know if i'm not 100 percent certain I guess it's J Jamie Dodger, and I think his yeah his name is Jamie. Uh, he's he's really great. He's he you know yeah I I really admire the the patience with which he's he's willing to to correct you know he he finds not not every video he makes is like this but he's made some videos where he finds something transphobic online and just explains how it's factually incorrect which yeah I, I really admire his patience I I don't I don't know how you you can be that patient when when people are attacking your very identity but yeah really really admirable and uh, right and and um, another one that is really great is Hold on, I have it right. Essence of Thought. Uh, she's also really great. Now, I have watched this movie twice. And let's see, when was the first time? I'll, I'll have it momentarily. The first time, yeah, yeah. Um, two and a half years ago was the first viewing. And my most recent viewing was right before I sat down and hit record for this video and yeah so the plot it's set in a brazilian prison during the military dictatorship and see the if i understand correctly the character if it, yes the character played by william hurt is often referred to as Luis Molina, but appears to prefer to be referred to as Luisa, and is not a gay man, but a trans woman. So I will I will be be trying to to refer to the character using she her pronouns. And the the actor using he him pronouns and yes I'm I if if I accidentally misgender anyone yeah please know I do not mean to offend now let's see yes so the it, yeah this the the technical aspects are quite impressive there's a lot of talent and enthusiasm on display there are <clears throat> i've seen some call into question the the saying that the budget was insufficient i think they did a very good job considering that it's this is not you know this is this is the way that like good 
when when um, Rob Rodriguez is at his best with a with a low budget. This is like an El Mariachi or Sin City or something like that. It's nothing like a Roger Corman movie where it legitimately looks cheap. So let's get into. I think I'm just going to combine the writing and direction sec uh, sections this time. And let's see. Yeah, I, I will say, I think, I'm not sure the movie itself is 100% certain that Luisa is a trans woman. Cer certainly a lot of characters appear to, to consider her a gay man but the the it it seems to me that that's the character's not understanding Luisa's actual gender identity and and you know um, given the the circumstances that she finds herself in she has not been able to transition other than socially and obviously that's not nothing. Some people are denied even social transition. And let's see. Um, let's see. Right, and and the you know it is very noteworthy that you know the the. Luisa is in in prison now. They say that she uh, was with a a minor. I'm not one hundred percent certain if, like the, I mean that's something that some fascists say in order to, uh, you know, because because if you're just saying this person, like, sexually does something with adults that I don't personally like, that this group that I'm a part of doesn't like, you know, that sounds like, to be sure, some do that, but, you know, it's easier to get the, to get as much support as you want if you're saying they're going after minors, and, yeah, it, it really doesn't, it seems like that was just something they, that, that was said about Luisa. And, you know, some people who are transphobic today pretend that trans people are never put in prison when, or, or at least not for reasons that, you know, related to their identity, when in reality, like, of course that's happened. Uh, it is happening, you know, there, there are countries in the world where you can go to prison for being trans right now, and, I mean... What what do you expect when when transphobes with political power are saying that trans people hurt cis people? Of course, the the like if you actually believe that, then the logical conclusion, you know, if if, if you believe in prison as as a you know punishment or deterrent or you know, yeah, what 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 would you know, I, I guess, you know, yeah, prison or, like, concentration camps, you know, but the, there's not really any other, so, again, you know, if you, if you, if you are someone watching this video right now, and you have trouble empathizing with trans people, just try to educate yourself, and, and look at, you know, logically, what, what do you think is going to to happen if people with political power think that a certain group of people are inherently dangerous and let's see and and to be clear if the the if the if the charge is accurate like 100% no one should be having sex with an underage person now and and I I don't you know I could be misinterpreting maybe maybe it is supposed to be that Luisa did have sex with an underage man and a cis man but the the yeah if that were the case you know when the book and movie came out it was more normalized 
and not only for LGBTQ, also for straight people. And statistically speaking, you know, a much larger per percentage of straight people are pedophiles than LGBTQ. And while LGBTQ just want equal rights, there are conservative straight people who want adults to marry and have sex with underage girls. You know, Matt Walsh has, you know, is on, like, I don't think he likes that people realize it, but he was recorded saying it, and it wasn't, like, sometimes when there's, like, oh, you know, must have been a joke. No, no, no. If you listen to the recording, like, there's no... I, I don't know if Matt Walsh is capable of being funny, but he wasn't trying to be funny either. And as far as I've been able to tell, the author of the book was a gay man, and apparently the director of the movie was, in addition to having empathy for them. The screenwriter was not gay, but did have empathy for them. And I just realized I forgot to say, the, the book was based on Manuel Puig, R.I.P. And the, the screenwriter was Leonard Schrader, R.I.P., and the director was Hector Babenko, R.I.P. And let's see the. So there are. Right. Some IMDb trivia. Reportedly, William Hurt and Raul Julia worked for nothing but the payment for their air tickets and hotel bills in Brazil where the film was shot, which is very admirable. And during rehearsals, the two actors had trouble finding the chemistry they needed for their scenes together to better understand what each needed from the other other's role. William Hurt suggested that they try an experiment where they would switch roles. And the role-switching rehearsal went so well, Hurt initially suggested to director Hector Babenko that they should switch parts for the film as well. Obviously, the switch did not occur, but Hurt states it was a very useful experiment in helping them more fully understand their characters. And I, I did see at least one critic who apparently misunderstood, who did think that originally it was the, you know, um, Raul was playing Luisa and Hurt was playing Valentine, but yeah, it might have been a. Um, I don't know if that person's first language was English. And Sonia Braga did not speak English at the time of production and had to recite her lines phonetically. I'm very, very impressed. She does a solid job. I don't. Have I seen her in anything? I'd, I'd really like to. She is amazing in this. Um, now, the, the, um, let's see, is, right, her niece, Alice Braga, her I am much more familiar with. I've seen her in a, a bunch of things, you know, the, both very, very talented women. But, but yeah, like, I, if I didn't know, I don't think I would have guessed. It's, it's very, very impressive. Like, she must have... Sonia Braga must have understood what the individual, like, what the, what the different parts of the line meant, because it really feels like she 100% understood and believed what she was saying. Now, let's see. Right, and William Hurt won a Best Actor Oscar, and it was the first Academy Award. Yeah, this... This uh, says the the character is openly gay, which again, you know, and uh, you know, hurt. Um, yeah. See again. Again, I I will be referring to Luisa as a uh, trans and being ha having socially transitioned. Uh, you know, she does wear the the yeah. She is wearing uh, like explicitly women's clothing in a, a lot of the movie and yeah it's it's rare for someone to win an oscar where it's where it's a, a man a, a male actor in in women's clothing so yeah and let's see yeah 
In an interview with National Public Radio, William Hurt stated that during a day off from production, he and a female companion were abducted at gunpoint by multiple gunmen in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He was reportedly told to face a wall, at which point he was certain that the gunman was going to execute both of them. Hurt refused, and after a brief shouting exchange, all of the kidnappers left the scene. The incident was not reported to the production company at the time because Hurt was certain that filming would be shut down, putting completion of the film in jeopardy. That really, that took a lot of guts. The, the, just, yeah. You know, I, yeah. Hurt really was, a, a, yeah. Not only an amazing actor, but from what I've heard, I, I don't, I won't claim to know everything. And, and some aspects of him are, were also really admirable as a, as a person. Not, not all. And uh, Hurt initially struggled with developing characterization and mannerisms for Luisa until he became inspired to portray the character not necessarily as homosexual, but more like a woman trapped in a man's body. And that, of course, used to be, and I'm sure a number of people still do think, that that is what, you know, a gay man is, when in reality that's, you know, that's, that's closer to a, a trans woman. And... As far as I know, the the thing with a woman trapped in a man's body—that's actually, that's basically a, a metaphor. Some some people try to treat it like a literal thing and say that that doesn't make sense. When like I'm not sure anyone's ever said that that was literally what was going on. But you know, you can't trust a transphobe to tell the truth. It's you know, it's it's usually bad faith. Now, uh, according to Anelka Montero Claro. William Hurt earned such respect and affection from the crew that they all accompanied him to the airport. Cons you know, which is like, I, you know, driving someone to the airport, that's like one of the biggest favors you can do. So, uh, yeah. When his part in the shooting was done to bid him farewell, he won them over with his personality and integrity, his sincerity and commitment to his work. And Hurt and Raul would work all hours, even coming in on Sundays. Later in the process, they went to the studio where the jail set was being constructed. According to Hurt, the crew stayed out of sight, just watched the actors rehearse for four hours, visibly touched that they put so much effort and passion into their work. I don't know two men who got into each character's souls as thoroughly as these two guys, David Weissman said. And tension started early on in the process when William Hurt and Hector... Babenko, uh, between William Hurt and Hector Babenko, David Weissman later remarked that Hurt had a wonderful mastery of language, spoke in great metaphorical ellipses that are hard to follow, even if English is your native language. For Babenko, it was impossible. He became frustrated by Hurt talking for hours and learned to just nod and pretend to agree in order to keep the conversations relatively short. By his own admission, William Hurt was already gaining a reputation for being difficult. He often pushed too hard, was not always diplomatic, but said, Raoul never saw any of the pushing I did as being offensive. Unbelievably professional, uh, Raoul uh, Julia. And um, initial screenings did not go well. Raoul Julia was furious after watching the first cut. What happened to the movie? What happened to all our great work? After seven months of post-production, the film was sent to the New York Film Festival. The selection committee rejected it without even watching the whole movie. William Hurt wasn't too concerned about this until he saw the first cut himself and realized why they dismissed it so abruptly. The fantasy film sequences were too long and overwhelmed the story of the relationship between the, the two characters. He wanted to buy the print and burn it so it would never be released. And thankfully, it was later, you know, it was fixed. Hector Babenko agonized all through rehearsals over how William Hurt wouldn't ever find the gate. The yeah, Luisa, in him, in himself, Hurt himself, to help Hurt tackle the part because author Manuel Puig was not available. Babenko put him with Patricio Biso, who was set to who was set to play the small role of Molina's friend Greta and design the film's costumes. Biso is gay, had been in jail himself, and was close to his mother, like Molina. In certain ways, Hurt toured Sao Paulo with him, often visiting gay cinemas, looking for clues to the character. Bissot got fed up translating the films for him and started making up the stories instead. Bissot later said Hurt used him as a sacrificial lamb for his process, playing cat and mouse games with him to get a sense of how Molina would react in similar circumstances. 
During one such session, Hurt took Biso to a nice restaurant, but Biso couldn't eat because Hurt's prodding and game playing made him cry. So, yeah, not admirable in all ways, to be sure. There were constant revisions from Leonard Schrader and Manuel Puig throughout every day. Hurt began to complain that he felt like he was working on a television soap opera, and tensions on set began to rise. And let's see. Right, originally Burt Lancaster was offered the role, uh, R.I.P. Uh, offered the role of uh, Luisa. Hector Babenko originally felt William Hurt was too well built and handsome for the part. I I have not seen enough Burt Lancaster work to say if if he would have been good. Now, the filmmakers originally planned to use cat people as one of the films Molina describes, just as he does in the novel. But they had trouble with Universal over the rights, forcing rewrites after shooting began to construct the fictional Nazi film. Which, like, if you've watched this movie, you know how big a part of the film, like, uh, you know, it no longer overwhelms the story between Luisa and uh, Valentin. But it's still, like, it's a significant part. So the fact that they had to rewrite to make it work with the like the metaphor that they do and and also have it like be able to f film those sequences like they they really incredibly incredibly good at working under such pressure and let's see um is that a uh, no. Actress Sonia Braga appears in both the movie and the movies too. Movies within a movie, totaling three roles. And she does amazing at all three of them. Like, it's... Yeah. The relationship between her and Babenko steadily deteriorated to the point where they didn't even speak to each other anymore. Assistant director Amilka Montero Claro became the go-between since he spoke both English and Brazilian Portuguese. Claro said the tension was terrible, but actually good for the film because it helped Hurt with his performance. So that that is really, yeah. And right, William Hurt and Raul spent five weeks in post-production dubbing the film, which gave Leonard Schrader the chance to rewrite most of the off-screen dialogue for the actors to record, giving the film a totally different feel, bringing the original intentions back into focus. After 14 months of post-production, the film was finished. So that's, yeah, some some movies are have much, much less post-production. And, yeah. Let's see. And the... Um, um, right, the original Broadway production of the musical Kiss of the Spider Moon will open at the Broadhurst Theater in 93, ran for 904 performances, and won Tony for Best Musical Book and Score. And yeah, the film was mainly released nine years after the source novel, which came out in 76. And yeah, Puig adapt adapted the book into a stage play in 83, which was actually first stage in 85. And even with the re re reworking, the film was rejected by distributors everywhere. The producers submitted it to the Cannes Film Festival. It was selected on one condition, that more editing be done to tighten up the ending. The recutting was done on the run, and the finished product barely made it back to Cannes in time for a screen. In fact, Dan Wiseman delivered it with the sound on separate magnetic tracks because there was no time to make a composite print. So just, yeah. And let's see. Manuel Puig came to Sao Paulo to work with Schrader on the script. He put a lot of humor back into the story and came up with the idea where Molina would first be introduced to the audience, wrapping a towel around his head while he related the... Uh, while she related the Nazi film story to Valentin. And let's see. The jail cell interiors were filmed at Veracruz Studios outside Sao Paulo. The walls of the cell were constructed to be raised and lowered to facilitate tracking crane and dolly shots. And they really took great advantage of that. 
and the the schedule was initially set for 60 days, but interiors took so much longer to shoot than planned. It ended up taking more than 100 days, and the producers were counting on a co-production deal with Gaumont to shoot the Nazi movie in Paris, but the French studio backed out at the last minute. This necessitated a lot of scrambling and rebudgeting to do the work in Buenos Aires, which was which has the most European feel of any South American city, but they couldn't even afford that, so they decided to use downtown Sao Paulo. It just it it must have been a complete nightmare to shoot. I'm I it's amazing that it came out so well. And wait, uh, Raul Julia lost weight for the role. I, different people have told me that his last name. I'm gonna see if maybe does no. Wikipedia does not say if it's Julia or Julia because different different people who speaks like Spanish or uh, yeah or the the particular version that that you know have have told me different things about how to pronounce his last name on a visit to Hurt's dressing room Babenko found him in full makeup and costume trying to get the gist of the character Babenko told him he had the body of a boxer and to use that to imagine himself as someone with his physique to, wanted to be a very elegant dancer the director told the freaked out star that when he understood the character from that contradiction then we'll talk about the ponytail, pancake, beauty mark, and the rest of the outward appearances. And let's see. Right, the cell block scenes were filmed in a prison that had been shut down. Scenes outside the prison were filmed on location in Sao Paulo. And at first, Babenko was not convinced about Hurt's ability. From the moment he got out of his taxi in New York and saw Hurt, he thought, this man, too American for my Latin American eyes, a Montana boy, could never play this man I love. Hurt, in fact, was from Washington, D.C., trade at Juilliard. Suddenly, after the first page and a half of the read-through, Hurt was like a wounded bird, and tears came to the director's eyes. He was convinced Hurt was up to the task. Included among the 1001 movies you must see before you die. And. Ah, oh, that's right, yeah. Um, Raul and Sonia Braga worked on The Rookie, Moon Over Paradox, and both feature in the telemovie, The Burning Season, The Chico Mendes. Oh, she's in The Rookie! Wow. Uh, I mean, it has been a lot of years since I watched that. I guess I didn't. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's one of those movies that remind you that, like, Clint Eastwood, as a director, like, you know, he can make something as intelligent as Unforgiven, which he directed only two years later, it's not like there was a huge, and then he can do something as just, you know, it's a, it's a fun film, you know, it works, it gets, it, it's, yeah, it gets right what it's going for, but it's not exactly a deep movie. But yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, and this was the final film of actor Luis Roberta Galicia, who died of AIDS, AIDS a few months before the film's release. To push Hurt to find his feminine side and also loosen up his body, make him more flexible and fluid, Benko had him work with choreographer Mara Borba, who was set to play the Spider Woman. Hurt was. Hurt would walk behind her down the street, watching and analyzing her movements. Borba helped him through out shooting as well, especially when he had trouble finding the right lightness. At one point, she suggested you take a scarf down from the wall and use it to make believe your head is like a full moon floating high above the clouds. Babenko arranged for Hurt and Raul to meet people who had been victims of political torture. Hurt decided at the last minute not to go, waited to hear what his co-star thought. And I think I I feel like that makes a lot of sense because his his character of Luisa she doesn't really like um, yeah she doesn't really think about torture very much she tries to only look at at positives of of life so I think it makes sense that Hurt made that decision. 
Maria Borba became the bridge between Hurt and Sonia Braga. Since Braga never went to the prison set to watch Hurt work as Molina, Borba would observe all her gestures and movements and bring them back to Braga when the film within the film scenes were shot later so she could replicate them. And this is extremely important because, like, Luisa and Valentin are both in a cell. You know, there's no, like... Luisa can't actually show, there's no, you know, it's too early for like stills or anything. So in order to get across how Alice Braga's character moves, Luisa basically has to act it out. So they'll cut right from one to the other. And if they don't, if, yeah, if they are not um, replicated accurately, the it it just doesn't work. Then then you're sitting there wondering why why is Luisa not getting this right? Because the movie is very important to her. It's it's important to remember at, at the very least. The budget was almost entirely used on shooting. There wasn't much left for post. In addition, the producers had only planned on two months to complete the work, but editing in fact went on almost a year in a dismal little cement block building in Los Angeles. The most difficult task was figuring out how to integrate the fantasy film f segments into the main story. And I have to say, they did an amazing job. Like, this really is just... Yeah, I... I like, I watched the movie before reading this stuff, and I would never have guessed that it was difficult for them because they make it look so... Effort, like it feels like this is the only way it ever could have been, you know. Like how some some I, I forget who, but one of the one of the re Renaissance artists, S some artist would would like look at a block and you know and and say by by you know the, their art process was just removing all the parts of the block that shouldn't be there. You know that's what it felt like with the editing of the of the film fantasy sequences. And yeah, the the it was shown on the thirteenth of May eighty five at the Cannes Film Festival, a mere fifty nine days after the twenty one year Brazilian military dictatorship featured in the film had come to an end on March fifteenth, when democracy was restored. Now, um, there are. Um, some have have expressed that they felt that it was a problem for the movie that it wasn't clear exactly where it was going on. You know, it was filmed in Brazil. I'm not sure the movie ever actually says the country. And I think I myself have never lived in a dictatorship. I've been extremely fortunate in, in that regard, so I'm not going to tell people who have been, you know, what to think about this. I'm, I'm merely sharing my thoughts as someone who hasn't experienced it, but I feel that the fact, it's, it's extremely clear in the film that this is South America, and the, 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 um, yeah, um, there are, you know, the, the, yeah, Brazil was not the only South American, you know, Latin American dictatorship. Uh, let's see, um, yeah, right now there's Maduro in uh, Venezuela, um, or, oh, wait. Crap. Uh, is that... Ah, crap. That's the thing with Google. Sometimes it'll get you exactly the answer you're looking for, and sometimes it absolutely will not. So let's see, is Maduro... Um, Nicolas Maduro. Yes, uh, he has been described as a, a dictator, and yeah, he's he's the 
Uh, let's see, is he in office right now, or does it? Oh. As as far as I can tell, he is the current. Yes, um, you know. So so like, if you watch this movie, and the thing you take away from it is Brazil is a dictatorship. And you don't think about, because a lot of the people who watch that, like, Americans are unbelievably ignorant about South America. They, they have almost no, no idea of the complexity and detail of it. I'm not going to claim that I myself am an export. I'm just saying it's, it's extremely important to, to appreciate the the overall you know and and the the film actually sort of draws a comparison between the Nazis and the South American dictators so the the I would say that you you know cer certainly something I took away from the movie was that there are some dictatorships in South America and you know the movie helps show like you know Luisa is someone who basically just, she just wants to live as a woman, and she's put in prison for that, next to someone that's being tortured because he's part of the resistance movement, you know, so, like, it's, it's this thing of, like, some, some people say, you know, why, why can't you just, you know, just, just live, live, you know, in a in a safe way, if you're living in a dictatorship. Well, Luisa, you know, she's not going around doing awful, awful things. She's just trying to live the 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 way that feels natural to her. And even though she's not hurting anyone, you know, she's yeah, she's treated. You know, she's put in the same cell. She's not being tortured, but. Still, you know, the, the conditions they think a resistance member deserves, they also think a trans woman deserves. You know, so, like, even, you know, let's hypothetically say that she had raped a, a an underage, of, you know, a, yeah, a, a teenage boy. Is that really supposed to be as bad as, like, resist, like, like, killing government people and and blowing up you know these these things that you know to, to be clear I'm I have empathy for the the resistance members I'm just saying you know they 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 end up being forced to take these violent acts in order to end the the worst violence of the regime so you know basically the movie is yeah the, the movie is saying even if you don't think that that things are so bad that, you know, pay close attention to how your country is being run. Now, choreographer Mara Bar Borba was originally set to play the Spider-Woman. Shots exist of her in costume. At the last minute, Sonia Braga suggested that she play the part since it would cause confusion for the audience to see her as Valentin's girlfriend and Lini Lamazon, but not the third female. She called Borba with the idea before taking it to Babengo. Borba said she was sad at first to lose the part, but realized Braga was right. And that playing the part was much less important than her true role in the film, which was her collaboration with William Hurt. And... I, I'm, I'm never going to be happy to see a, a woman lose work, but I definitely do agree that it's, it's pitch perfect to, to have the, the, yeah. Now, Dan Wiseman drove the footage across country to New York to recut it and work on sound. There was no insurance and no backup footage. If something had happened on the road, the film might have been lost. And let's see. Yeah, preparation for the shoot began with full week of rehearsal to in New York, to in Sao Paulo. With many hours of footage in the can, Dan Weissman became worried about Hector Popenko's ability to handle the edit since his English was still not very good. So he stepped into overseas post production by the term time principal principal photography wrapped. Weissman had culled through the footage and reduced the usable takes to three hours of film. 
Just days before principal photography began on the movie, Hurt told Babenko, you've been very patient and I have a surprise for you. On the first day of shooting, there was Molina, just as the director had hoped. William Hurt waived his salary so that the film could be made within its budget. And... The um, right, it's the first Hollywood production that Babenko directed. I, I have to say, I'm not familiar with any of the the other work of of him or the the um, the novel writer. I don't. I'm not sure I know anything else of. Yeah, I. This is also the only um, Leonard Schrader written film that I've seen. Dan Weissman and Hector Babengo fought constantly during editing, sometimes to the point of physical confrontations, making things very difficult for the people cutting the picture. Schrader had to come back from Tokyo, where he was working on his brother Paul's film, Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters, to act as go-between. And in July 1984, Hector Babenko went back to Sao Paulo to su supervise work on the score. While there, he discovered he had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and had to begin a long treatment process, and Dan Wiseman continued editing in California. This movie was picked by Entertainment Weekly magazine as one of the 50 greatest independent films, and a special supplement devoted to independent films that was only distributed to subscribers in November 1997. And this was the movie that catapulted Sonia Braga's career in Hollywood, which is really, really cool. She, I 100% understand. She really is amazing in this. Now, let's see, yes, so uh, some I'm going to quote some of my written review. So, yeah, to mention a cell in Brazil, the political prisoner Valentino fears that soon he will be interrogated again. They will attempt to force him to give up the names of his brethren. And Lu uh, Luisa, the trans woman whose thoughts seem to always be about love, how their loved ones on the outside are coping with them being in prison. The latter recalls the former a movie, supposedly made in the 40s, and its golden hue works both as what film looked like back then and as this imagined escape from being locked up in a deeply romantic fantasy, getting far away from the claustrophobia and isolation, physical as well as social, of, of the cell he loves with a powerful story. This is gripping from start to finish. It seems as though these two could not be any more different, and yet clearly both of them have at least some empathy for the other, and the movie has a similar effect on the viewer as well. By the time you've watched this entire thing, which I urge you to do, you will be you will completely understand both of them. The actors really dive into their characters, and it's some of the best work I've seen from them, and I've long, long done what I can to catch everything they've made. And... let's see... Yeah, so some critic quotes. Louise loves to tell Vente about a film he once saw, which actually was a German Nazi propaganda film, but that doesn't bother Louise. What he loves is the soap opera plot about forbidden love between a German officer and a French freedom fighter, while Valentine is offended by the movie. Babenko shot, shoots Louise and Louisa and Valentine living the living quarters from every possible angle to make us feel hemmed in. Cinematographer Rodolfo Sanchez completes the effect with poetic bittersweet lighting. The pale matte colors, stained walls, and rain backlit with blue light reinforce the degraded nature of the characters. Because the film has very few locations for changes in scenery, there is a danger that things could quickly become stagey, something which is reinforced by the source material. Puig's novel, which later became a play in a Broadway musical, is an often uneasy blend of realism and melodrama, which could, would lend to a somewhat histrionic quality to any film version. It is testament to Babenko's skill as a director that he is able to have two often outrageous characters sharing the screen without things ever going over the top. If Hurt was just a little more camp, or Raoul just a little more fiery, then it would feel stagey, but Babenko tells us a lot by showing us relatively little. The main theme of the movie is the conflict between escapism and reality, and to what extent the former can help us understand or tolerate the latter. There's a contrast between Luisa's move, love of old movies and fantasy and the iron will of Valentin, who regards films as bourgeois and a distraction from the concrete goals of his revolutionary beliefs. Let's see. While Luisa revels in the mystique of old Hollywood, remarking that 
She always wanted to play the heroine. Let's see. Valentine likens the whole experience to jerking off. Those character is undoubtedly effeminate. This is not a cliched Hollywood gay performance, all mincing and hinged wrists. Some I, I should note that while the, the film has a lot of historical value for the LGBTQ community, some LGBTQ individuals have felt that Hurt's performance is, you know, misguided in, in some respects. Let's see, and Hurt is very convincing, and all that is good and bad about Kiss of the Spider Woman can be found in its recreation of Hollywood movies, but Benko carefully recreates the sepia visuals and big gestured action star styles, resisting the temptation to be arch and snigger at them under his breath, but while he never falls into the traps, uh, let's see, possible with it, he ends up being so overly affectionate that we are the... Eh, Yes, this this person thinks that some that it ends up with the audience sniggering. One cannot help but laughing. I I disagree. That didn't happen to me either on either viewing. And let's see. Yeah, and this person thinks that something there's a there's a plot twist that is revealed to. Um, yeah, let's see, they, they wrote far too readily. And... Let's see... Yeah, an engrossing, intense prison drama. And... Central performances are believable and compelling, but Benko's direction does justice to Puig's novel, by achieving a decent balance between the gritty and theatrical. And... <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, and this this person says, you know, in the grand scheme of prison dramas, it has long since been eclipsed by the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, if if you're if you're going for a prison drama and you don't care about the the trans character, yes, the you know Shawshank Redemption is the the better film in that regard. Another says, the art direction and cinematography are fabulous, absolutely true. Like, they really did an amazing job on all of the sets. Like, everything, you know, the, the cell, it would be very easy for it to just be bland and just, you know, we, we spend a lot of time in that cell with, with Luisa and Valentin, so it's extremely important that it's, that there's something there to, to you know, make it, you know, and yeah, basically, like the the um, Luisa has brought all the you know she she's hung up all these pictures of women that she you know admires, and the the um, yeah, and and they also have I suppose it's possible. Wait, was the was the cell? I suppose it's possible that the graffiti on, or uh, not really graffiti, but there's there's some words written on the. I suppose it's possible that was already there, and they just chose not to cover it up. This this next review is fascinating. Uh, one one person gave this a three out of ten, and their their um, IMDb user review. Um, one line summary is really misleading. And they wrote, not the worst movie I've seen, but not terribly exciting. From the title, I was expecting a trashy B-movie about some sort of half-human, half-spider monster instead of a dark psychological drama. I would have preferred the former. Like I said, not a bad movie. I'm just not really a drama fan. Now, see, I... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to unpack this. So... I'm not going to claim that I've never ever made the mistake of just going off a title. Um, I, you know, yeah, some some years ago I thought that, you know, I, I saw in the TV listings that they were going to show a Sleepy Hollow. I assumed that it would be the Tim Burton one, but instead it... It, it wasn't the animated one, it was, I'm almost 100% certain it was live action, and 
I now realize that it actually followed the original story very, very closely, which, as, you know, I was hoping for the Tim Burton version, which, if you know very much about that and the original story, you know they're not, like, there's a lot of differences between the two, and, yeah, I was, you know, so I ended up watching a movie, you know, I, I decided to sit through it and see, I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll still be good, you know, I ended up not really liking it. So I'm not going to claim that, that that's the kind of thing that never happens. Although, I don't know why this person didn't just, like, type the title into IMDb or Google Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, anything at all. Because it's, like, I get that if you just look at the title, that's what you would think. And I, I an argument could be made for the, the cover and poster art as well, but... You really don't have to do very much research in order to learn, you know, so, so. But beyond that, why did they feel a need to write a review? And why give it 3 out of 10 if it's just, that's eh, not really my kind of thing. Like, just, yeah. Anyway. It's, it, it's fascinating to me, someone who feels the need to write a review and even confess, you know, I made a mistake, but... Here I am giving something a really negative review for, yeah, no real reason. Anyway, more than anything, this is a film about male tenderness. Molina is a gentleman, uh, yeah, this person uh, is of the opinion that Molina is a man. Valentin is more abrasive in prison, but is shown as equally pensive outside the prison. Well, you know, we're, we're told what he was like outside prison. Now, let's see. The film is impressive enough, but if you read the novel, you will be even more impressed. It's a film of dialogue, brief reports flowing from dialogue to internal monologue. Let's see. It belongs on a list with the English pa patient of novels that you would never have expected to make coherent films due to their difficulty, but somehow, through great care, were made into great films. And let's see. Yes, so the the opening of the movie does a really great job setting up the, the rest of the film and setting the tone. I'm not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad, but it fits what came before, more or less. And I, I will admit, I didn't completely understand the ending at first, but, you know, having thought more about it, yeah, it's it's a great ending. Some critics really don't like the ending, some think the ending is perfect. And... Yeah, so I was not able to get a copy of this to either read or listen through. So I am not able to make any comparisons. Now, uh, that brings us to the characters. Luisa, let's see. Um, yeah, uh, one, one person has undoubtedly hurt one because he was playing... A, a trans man, some feel that her performance was over the top. Uh, the, the, you know, but, but yeah, LG, LGBTQ can be flamboyantly out of the closet, and the character is not intended to be representative. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and Hurt's performance is delicate, buoyed with humanity. And,. Uh, Hurt resists reducing Luisa to simple quirks and eccentricities. And... Let's see. Yeah, and one LGBTQ reviewer points out, politics led to Hurt's winning the Oscar due to, to the exclusion of even a nomination for Jorge Julia. Isn't he brave? A straight man playing trans. Now... Uh, let's see. Yeah, and and uh, you know, Luisa is introduced talking about the the propaganda film that she felt so inspired by the the melodrama of, and you know, wearing women's clothing and the the 
just, yeah, the, the way that Hurt talks and moves and just everything, just immediately you get what they're, they're doing, the, the, him and the other film, Hurt and the other filmmakers. And Raul is introduced, you know, there's, there's, his, his shirt is, is almost covered in, in sweat. And one of the wounds that Torture left has apparently reopened and there's some blood on the shirt from that. You know, so just immediately you can tell, you know, he's, he's been tortured and he's basically, he's kind of just waiting for them to, you know, grab him and torture him some more. And, you know, he's, he's actually at times almost more... Like, where Louisa tries to, to describe the movie, to, to get both of them some, some peace from the cell, you know, Valentine is essentially hanging on to the, the harshness of reality and wondering, why haven't they taken me back to torture? You know, so, like, there's a... There, you know, and that that's how it is at at the very start. And you know, over the course of it, maybe both of them will be able to inspire the other to to look at things from their point of view instead of only their own. And let's see. Uh, Jose Lugoy plays Warden Milton Gun. Havis plays secret policeman. Miriam Perez plays Molina's mother. She doesn't have a ton of screen time, but she is very, very convincing in the time she has because it is very important that there is a a very close relationship between her and Luisa. And this is, of course, you know, it's a stereotype. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not true that, um, you know, cis men who grow up with a very affectionate mother you know can can grow up to be you know gay or trans women or such now let's see right and Nuno Leal Maya plays Gabriel Molina's friend Fernando Torres plays Americo who also not a ton of screen time but <coughs> a ton of just like there's a yeah his his performance is very very convincing patricio biso as greta uh her son capri plays werner and yeah so the following several are in the in the movie fantasy disney's dumont as michelle N nildo parente <coughs> as the leader of resistance antonio petrin as clubfoot and Wilson Grace flunky, and they all do a really, really solid job. It really does feel like if I didn't know, I would have believed that this that they found a movie from the forties that and and just used that. They really do nail the the way that people acted back then, the the like f film acting back then. I mean, uh, like if you compare it to like some of Chaplin's Chaplin's work during the 40s like you know which is obviously um there's perhaps a, in the Chaplin movies the ones who you know even the ones who aren't supposed to be funny but just like present you know there is a like by today's standards it feels very stagey and over the top and uh, there is a an element of the fact that Early on, film was not seen as a new medium. It was essentially seen as, oh, I mean, okay, I guess we can film stage plays and show them to people without the actors present. Like that, that you know, so, so yeah, people would act the way you do on a stage where you might be just tiny compared to people all the way up in the stands. So you have to gesticulate over, you know, in a way that seems over the top for real people in, in normal life to do for it to, to translate. Otherwise, the people who are sitting all the way up there 
they're not going to be able to follow it, they're not going to show up for more performances. Now, and yeah, Miguel Falabella as Lieutenant, Ana Braga as Lydia Valentin's yeah, uh, girlfriend, and Sergio Cato as Martim Molina's friend. Now, there is at least one very, very unpleasant character who's played by a, a black man, and as such, like, I can't help but, but, you know, it, I, I, I come to think if this means that the, you know, if it is supposed to be, if, if they're trying to say that black men are just worse, but he's not the only person of color in the film. And, uh, yeah, the character of Gabrielle is a much more positive depiction. So, the, the yeah, in, in my opinion, it appears to not be motivated by racism. Now, the, the dialogue is, is really great. Uh, there are 11 entries in the IMDb quote section. All of them are good and yeah, you, you get a very strong sense of who someone is based on what they say, how they say it, when they say it, you know, so the, the, yeah, it, it really, um, at the very start, Louisa is completely in love with this movie, and Valentine realizes it's, it's a Nazi propaganda film, and Louisa is basically like, I, I just, I like, you know, other parts of it, and Valentine thinks, you know, how can you possibly divorce it from its political context, you know, so it, that, that gives you a very strong sense of the two characters, and, you know, yeah, and, and, yeah, you do, you later learn it's not completely as it first appears, you know, or, or I, some of it is that, some of it is character growth. Now, um, yeah, I've, I've talked about the cinematography, and, right, I have one more thing to add about the editing. They really do a phenomenal job with the, the, just, it's a movie where these two characters are in prison for a long time. Uh, you know, we, we learn at one point that Luisa has been, uh, you know, um, you know, sh she's going to spend eight years in prison. No possibility of parole until, if, if I understand correctly, until those eight years have passed. And that's the kind of thing that could really kill the momentum of a film if it just feels like, oh, I guess we're just gonna sit here and watch two people in prison for a really long time, you know, and even on the second viewing, even knowing everything that was going to happen, I still never lost interest. I never felt like it was just dragging, uh, no pun intended, you know, the, the, yeah, it was always, there's always something for us, the viewer, to latch on to, something for us to really, you know, be, be taken aback by, and, or, ah, that's the wrong, something, something for us to find fascinating, you know. <clears throat> now, that brings us to the music, which was handled by Narno Canero, who has actually only composed for this and a a photo slide mini documentary called Manuel Puig: The Submissive Woman's Role. So that, yeah, um, the the. Um, Yeah, 
that's I I um I would not have guessed. I it was maybe okay. It doesn't really say. I would I would guess that they're a musician just does one that doesn't normally score. And yes, the other person responsible for the for composing was John Neschling who has 13 credits as composer one of them also for the short film that the other one did I gotta say I have I yeah I don't know any of this other work some of it is um, Latin American oh that's right yeah um, and uh, okay I'm gonna I'm gonna guess this is probably wrong Pijote uh, P I X O T E, which was also directed by Babenko, so they worked together. And uh, um, that's a 1980s film. They worked together before, so you know they they were happy to work together. And I can absolutely imagine that, like the music is really really perfect. It completely nails what it's going for. Like there's the there's the present day music. There's the music for the old film. There, there's like, yeah, you know, just they, they really do an amazing job. Now the the sound design, I can absolutely imagine that at least some of the prison stuff needed to be, you know, if you if you know very much about audio recording, you know, if you if you film some like stuff that in a cell like the human ear like it's already kind of annoying a microphone for a, a camera is just it's it's really really unpleasant to listen to like nobody's going to sit still and and listen to it if you've ever been unfortunate enough to be subjected to a film that was made by someone who did not know how to work with audio you know, and I'm I'm not saying that like it doesn't make them a bad person. They might just not have had the the you know I've I've had a little bit of training in it, uh, but but yeah, if you don't have that training, it's it's not you know it, if you if you buy a well uh, what's it called a consumer camera. If you, like, maybe you want to film, maybe you're going on vacation with your family, you want to film some stuff to remember it by, or, you know, whatever. Those have microphones that kind of fill, that, that try, you know, they've been made to try to filter that stuff out. But a film, a, like, I have to admit, I when, when I work, now let's see, what I worked with, I guess were technically, I believe technically film cameras. The the yes, and we and we converted it to digital after the the people in, in charge felt that that was the best way. That was how you got the most detail uh, was to to convert it rather than just film on digital. I believe that is how. Or wait. You know what? I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, the the microphones certainly were like like you couldn't just turn on the microphone and record immediately. You had to basically um you know, I don't actually remember the procedure. I just don't remember that there was one. But basically, you had to if if I understand correctly, the procedure basically adjusted the microphone to the environment and yeah you know so so but you still do need an acoustically you know yeah if you don't have an environment that's good for acoustics and especially back in 1985 you know they would definitely be shooting film i i would definitely say at least some of it they had to in editing just cut out the original audio for some because there's like there's a scene where like some of them are like shouting murder and like bashing that they're like using their I guess uh, steel cups for water against the bars and like you know 
I would be very surprised if they didn't have to reconstruct that and they did an amazing job it really does it feels like you're there and right so this movie is an hour and 53 minutes if you don't count end credits and 55 and a half if you do and yeah uh, I never lost interest I would definitely say that parts of the film feel different there's a certain yeah there's a certain plot twist that once you learn it the it, it kind of it changes how you view things and but but yeah I, I would definitely say you should try to watch the first 45 minutes if after that you legitimately don't care about anything that's coming up it's you know if, if you're not gonna like insult someone by you know no longer watching it I'm not sure there's anything after that point that's really going to grab you so yeah the best elements of the film it's a it's a tie I love that it has so much empathy for this trans woman and the the acting performances the the direction like if you if you showed just the fantasy segments to someone and told them that you found this old 40s film I would say most people would believe that it really was something unless they recognize an actor that's basically uh, yeah right I just realized I haven't even mentioned despite being made by some you know it, it was made in Latin America by some Latin Americans the 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 main language spoken is English um, there is a little uh, hold on. There's some French, some fr Portuguese, and some German spoken, but you know, as let's see, was did they even subtitle? I'm not sure they actually subtitled the parts that weren't in English, and I still completely understand. You know, I I do not speak enough uh, of of yeah French or Spanish to to yeah. Which, you know, it's not just the fact that I really did not like my French teacher. I, you know, my Spanish teacher was fine, other than the final exam where she kind of freaked out. But the, uh, yeah, German, like, I remember as a kid thinking, you know, at age seven watching English cartoons and thinking wow it's so it's so interesting this other language you know and, and looking at how certain yeah certain things between Danish right I realize I haven't said in this video I'm Danish you know yeah between between Danish and English you know so yeah I, I started learning English not long after I started learning Danish like like properly you know I, I suppose I spoke something before but but yeah and you know yeah I when I was a child the the you know once once I learned enough English and my parents wanted to discuss the the birthday present they were thinking of and I was close enough by to hear you know at first they would use English and then they real you know you can you can if you look at a child who's not a good liar you can tell if they understand what you're saying even if they if the kid is present you know like I you know I would definitely be like they're getting me that you know so so yeah so they realized that I understood what they were saying so they started using German and that's when I decided that being bilingual was enough for me and this is probably a pretty good time to say, uh, you know, but my when my mother was alive and back when my father was working, he's uh, retired now. You know, they were both language teachers. You know, so yeah. Now, the the worst aspect is perhaps, you know, arguably it. You know, parts of the movie certainly make Louise, Louisa 
seem kind of selfish, overly romantic, unserious, almost stupid, for wanting to live her truth as a trans woman. It's far from the only film that does this. It's a trope that needs to go. I, um, I forget the name of the YouTuber, but they're, um, oh, Ad Adequate um, Emily, um, is her name, and she talked about how it's a problem, ah, uh, crap, what's the movie that, um, I'll, t I'll try to have it momentarily, or stop looking. Right, um, The Danish Girl, which, yeah, um, is, is in, one of the problems with that is the, to, to be clear, I'm, I'm referring to what she has said, um, yeah, is, is that it makes the, the trans woman in that movie out to be selfish for wanting to, to live, the, you know, like, like it's a, like she has a, like she's confused and people are humoring her kind of thing and just, yeah. Um, whether or not it ruins the movie for you is ultimately up to, you know, I, I, I cover this movie in part because it's historically significant, in part because, you know, sadly, I've, the, the only other trans-centric film that I have access to, I put up right behind me, is Boys Don't Cry, and I did already do, you know, I, I love that movie. I, I don't really have more to say about it than I already did in the videos I did uh, years ago. So, yeah, uh, you know, th those are the, the reasons. I'm not necessarily saying, like, if you're, if you today are a trans person and you are upset that your rights are being taken away as, as you know, yeah, abs absolutely makes sense, you know. I wouldn't necessarily recommend watching this. It it might make you uh, very very sad, you know. Now, um, yeah, and the the worst criticism, uh, the yeah, the the a criticism that I found some others, uh, you know, saying that yeah, some some people said that the movie is nothing like the book. And that's definitely, I can completely understand, you know, I've experienced many times reading a book and watching the movie and, like, two-thirds of the time it's different in really significant ways and I would say the, a lot of those times, you know, it's actually a, a, a legitimately bad adaptation to where you wish they had just done a spiritual successor or, or just taken something and complete and, and gone in a completely different direction so, yeah instead of having parts that are almost left over because they felt like well we gotta put that in there now um, yes so the thing I was w most worried about before watching was that it would be very offensive to the LGBTQ community, and ultimately, in some ways, it is. I, I definitely, you know, I, I wouldn't blame anyone for watching this and feeling like, you know, it's, it's really, you know, the, yeah, the fact that the, the, that, that Hurt plays Louisa the way that Hurt did, and, um, I don't know if um, I I don't know if the um, yeah so I the the um, let's see if I can okay. Um, yeah, so the, the, um, oh, never mind, that's actually a completely different, yeah. Thank you for nothing, Google. Um, yeah, I, I, um, hmm. 
I don't know. Uh, I'm not educated enough on the su subject to say if the character of Louisa could have been played by a trans woman actor um, in 1985. You know, today there are a number of, of trans women who are acting. I don't know if there were enough, and it might have also been, they might have felt that they needed a name to help sell it, uh, you know, um, and, and, you know, for that name to be a white man. I don't know if they felt that uh, Raul could have sold the movie. Um, now, the thing I was most looking forward to was the acting of the two leads, bringing to life such an important struggle. And, yeah, I, I really felt like they did an amazing job. Now, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has an 86 critic score and 81% audience score. The, there are 35 critic reviews, 30 fresh, 7.50 out of 10 is the average critic rating. 3.9 is the average user rating, and there are more than 5,000 ratings. The consensus, it weaves an alluring exploitation of sexual and societal norms that's further elevated by strong work from William Hurt and Raoul Julia. Huh. Compares it to The Day of the Locust. I mean, that's an amazing movie, but I'm not sure... I'm not sure I would admit. I mean that that movie is like about how Hollywood is very dehumanizing and this is, yeah I did they really not have five entire movies that were and boys don't cry isn't on this list at all which I would definitely say you know both of both movies being about the struggle to be accepted as a trans person and and being punished just for being trans. Now on Metacritic, it has an 80 out of 100, 10 critic reviews, all of them positive. And right, and and at first I thought they must have the wrong movie because it says you know wait it says it's from 2001, but it's the re-release that is being judged here. It is the 85 movie. It's just yeah, and an 8.3 out of 10. On meta uh, uh, user score on Metacritic, based on 15 ratings, only three mixed, 12 positive. There's only two reviews, and both of them are positive. I, you know, it's it's really great when when meta. Although I worry that it might just be that like transphobes haven't discovered this one because if you look at like more recent movies, there there's a lot of hate on Metacritic in the user review section for like progressive movies. Now, on IMDb, it has 75 reviews, 61 without um, spoilers. So, yeah, I, I read them all, you know, normally I just read the top vote of 100, but there's less than even that. And the ones most voted most useful uh, actually, yeah, anyway, the 75 reviews. Uh, two of them gave it a 1 out of 10, two gave it 2 out of 10, one gave it 3 out of 10, three gave it 4 out of 10, one gave it 5 out of 10, six gave it 6, 15 gave it 7, 26 gave it 8, 15 gave it 9, 8 gave it 10. So, yeah, very, very positive, which again, like, I think to some extent it is the fact that, like, the people who went to IMDb were the people who really, really liked it, you know. Now, there are 41 links in the IMDb External Reviews section. 28 of them I could read, so the links worked and were in English. And, yeah, so I... Yeah, it, it won one Oscar, 14 wins in total, 10 nominations... And, right, so the, yeah, I don't think I really have anything to add to what I've already said about that in detail. Now, the special effects, 
It's not a very special effects heavy movie, but there are a couple of times where it is very important that the special effects are very, very convincing. There is a, a point, you know, it's not, the movie isn't full of the Spider-Woman, but she does make an actual appearance, and they show the web that she has supposedly spun, and it is... It, it is very, very... They, they did a really good job. Like, it legitimately looks... You know, they like they couldn't just, like, find a real spider's web and, and set up camera. You know, they found a location, and then they had to build the spider web. And, yeah, they did a really, really good job. Uh, there are some stunts that are quite convincing... It's not a stunt-heavy movie, but what there is, they did do a really good job. Now, I think, yeah, I have a number of links to, to really good videos about trans, uh, um, what's the word, like trans, um, Oh right, the, yeah. I'm. I will probably be putting some links in the description box for like YouTube videos on trans issues. Now, um, yes, that brings us to the rating, and I rate this eight pro LGBTQ stories out of ten. And yeah, honestly, I could probably watch this again later today. Like, it really is, you know, um, yeah, check out if it's streaming on some service that, you know, I was happy, I was fortunate enough that it was streaming on the, the my um, Danish libraries have this um, streaming service. <clears throat> they have a limitation I think it's is it four? I, f I forget. You can you can only stream so and so, you know and at one. Yeah, there's a limited number of streamings you can do for you know or rentals for one month, you know and yeah. But but beyond that, you know my my taxpayer money pays for it. I don't have to pay extra for that. And, yeah, I would absolutely say that in a lot of ways the movie holds up. Obviously, a lot has happened with representation. And I think it is a movie that, you know, I really, really hope we are able to get past the vile transphobia that right now is, is you know, there's a, there's a lot of transphobic, you know... There's a there's a significant movement of transphobia in America and England and yeah hopefully in you know it there there will be a turning point um, and and I think this is one of those movies that you know I I think right now it can do some good because like you know you watch this movie and you see this wonderful person who's locked up, like, maybe I am misinterpreting it. If not, I wish that they had made it a little bit more clear that she didn't actually go after an underage person, that it was, like, that the person was a, that the, the you know, it wasn't a teenage boy, it was a man. But, again, I, I might be misinterpreting uh, that aspect, but... Yeah, you know, you see that, like, the, the one of the big things, one of the big problems, and this is not only for transphobia, but right now it's exp uh, very, very um, expl uh, explicit. It's very, uh, yeah, ev you know, it's, it's there for everyone to see. That a lot of these people, a lot of transphobes, you know, not all, but a lot of them have never actually met a trans person and the ones who have have not viewed that trans person 
as a fellow human being. You know, the way that they talk about them and treat them, it, it really is like they're the... the yeah, like they, they think there's some... that being trans is inherently lesser than being cis. So, yeah, I think this movie, you know, can, can maybe help some people, you know, yeah, think, you know, a, yeah, actually realize the humanity of trans people. And let's see. And, and for sure, it's a movie that, like, it's, it's wild that there's so few reviews, you know, so I, I mentioned we have, um, yeah, there's 41 links to reviews for, um, uh, uh, on IMDb, you know, and, uh, let's see, there was something that was more, what was it, um, I think it might have been was it this maybe you know for for more recent stuff there's way more reviews and I get it you know if you review something recent a lot of people are gonna actually you know read that review and and check out but let's see yeah there's 77 external review links at least for agents of shield which like, I haven't watched it yet. I hear a lot of people say really, you know, yeah, a lot of people don't think very high. Yeah. To be fair, some of those are because they're individual for individual seasons. But the, the, <clears throat> actually, yes, you know, Birds of Prey, if you look at user reviews, where again, this movie, Kiss of the Spider Woman, Kiss of the Spider Woman only. Oh, right. Kiss of the Spider Woman has 75 reviews. Birds of Prey has 2,711. And if you look at external reviews, let's see. Okay, so that's. Oh crap. 416 external review links. You know, I love Birds of Prey, and I do think that one also, you know, as a progressive, I really admire that movie. That that also does some some important things. But I I really the fact that Kiss of the Spider Woman has so few comparatively is just yeah, I, I really, really hope that more people discover this, and I don't know if my channel is big enough to help make that happen, but, you know, be the change you want to see in the world, even if you don't necessarily think that it will happen. But yeah, that is it for the entire review, so from here on out, I will get into spoilers, so please do not watch anymore until you've seen the movie. Starting with notes taken while watching. So in the opening, I really love the, the contrast between the film that uh, Luisa describes. And, you know, the, the detail that we don't see it right away. At first, we see the cell, and it's like panning across. So we're seeing one thing, but being told something completely different. Yeah, really great contrast, and you, like, immediately you understand, of course, Luisa feels a need to be talking about this. Look at the state of the, you know, look at how bad their day-to-day -day life is. And, yeah, when, when Luisa says they're not regular French people, they're not wearing the, the, uh, I forget what the, what the French hat is called, but yeah, you know, yeah, it becomes clear, even if you didn't know from, from looking, which obviously is also, you know, we quickly realize, and not long after uh, Valentin realizes Luisa has been seduced by propaganda. And yeah, we, you know, Louise, uh, uh, 
Luisa, when um, when Valentine says, "I don't know why they stopped torturing me," you know, you'll notice that Luisa has a you know reaction to that. That you know, at the time, you think, "Oh, you know, she's like, I I thought we were gonna talk about my movie. I'm really psyched about this movie," you know, but on rewatch, you realize, "Oh, she's worried." You know the the you know if if Valentine realizes that she is you know that the yeah that's why they're they're cellmates that's the yeah, that's the thing I'm not were they cellmates before the the torture ceased or was it just that they realized that maybe Luisa could be lured into and anyway. You know that's the that yeah that Luisa is trying to get information from them, and maybe also on some level feels bad about this. So I, I like that they set that up so early, because really it's only by the very end that Luisa goes against what the warden and I guess he's the is he the chief of the secret police. Um, See, I'm not even entirely sure which which of the anyway, but but yeah. Um, let's see. And I I like you know Luisa points out why do only women get to be sensitive? You know that's all I've I've always felt that it's ridiculous to, to try to make all men not show like. To be human is to be sensitive. Just there's degrees to how sensitive you are. There's different things you're sensitive about. But <clears throat> let's see. Now, um, yeah, and you know the the when the food is handed, you know, Luisa knows which one is the the you know, yeah, which one has the poison, but Valentina won't, Valentino won't take that plate because, you know, he's thinking the, the, you know, this thing of, yeah, the, the, uh, let's see, what were, yeah, he said they're just trying to divide us, you know, and I really love Valentin's um, de uh, description of what a real man is. You know, someone who never makes someone else feel small, someone who never humiliates someone else, that kind of thing. Absolutely uh, agreed. And, you know, yeah, that is the kind of, you know, yeah, if I was a, if I did live in a, um, dictatorship, I probably would at least try to be. I don't know if I would be good at it, but I would at least try to be a resistance member. You know, that is the, the kind of thing that motivates that feeling that nobody should be humiliated. And let's see, to, to be clear, uh, you know, I, I I don't mind the use of, I, I think using humiliation as a tactic against hate hateful people that i think is is okay you know the the i don't think someone should be humiliated who isn't saying or doing something awful basically now the yeah very very sweet when luisa talks about the the waiter and you know kept going to the same place day after day you know it took a very long time before the waiter would even walk with. Let's see. Yeah, and and um, yeah, very unpleasant when Valentine gets very angry at Luisa, and when Valentine is poisoned, he refuses treatment. You know, and and I mean, I think what he describes has been used by um, dictatorships, the, the thing of, you know, poisoning someone and then giving them, 
you know, it might not be medication, but it's like painkiller or something, and then, you know, get them hooked on the painkiller, and then the, the, you know, if they become uh, addicted, the, they, they're, you know, you can, you can offer them a fix, and, and a lot of addicts will be willing to, to do anything, say anything, to get it. And very, you know, very sweet when Louisa tenderly tends to Valentine and the, the detail that Valentine does love Marta despite the, the class, you know, so he, you know, he's, he doesn't like that Louisa is, you know, infatuated with the, you know, that, that she loves this, um, propag Nazi propaganda film, but he himself does, you know, also acknowledge that it can, you know, yeah, when, when push comes to shove, he is capable of falling in love with someone that is, you know, yeah, this, this, um, where there is this class difference. And great contrast between the cell and the warden's office. Like, even without the things that are being offered, even if you take that out of the equation, just the office itself is so much nicer. And the fact that, you know, Louisa gets to go to the warden's office, you know, over and over again, you know, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very clear. It, again, you know, I mentioned in the review, this dictatorship thinks that Louisa, for being a trans woman, deserves to be in the same cell as a resistance member. And, and to be fair, you know, yes, there is this element that they're trying to extract information from the resistance member, but it seems like the, like, when Louisa leaves the prison, some of the prisoners wave goodbye to her. I the you know clearly some of them are lgbtq and they seem to be in as bad or worse cells you know so just yeah um the the you know but the moment that louisa is maybe useful to them they're like come in here sit down in the nice chair enjoy the off would you like some coffee here um I have a pen. Let me know what you would like us to buy and say, you know, so that you can pretend your mother brought all this. You know, it's just they don't actually it's it's the the um, so yeah, either either there's a hypocrisy there that they think that Louisa is okay if she's useful to them or the the you know, on some level they don't believe that Louisa is that bad. And certainly, you know, if you're working for a dictatorship, of course you think that the resistance, like, unless you're secretly a sympathizer or something, if you're towing the party line, you think that the resistance are just awful. So, you know, clearly they they do Yeah, there's there's something there, I, I think that and let's see see the um, yeah I, I really do love that you know Louisa uh, you know and she she like slight it's just at first tippy toe and then just leans in when she's like you know one of the guards said that my mother is visiting and I don't want Valentine to get suspicious so if you know I'm, I'm just saying hypothetically if you bought all this stuff, then, you know, the, the, um, it, it would be more convincing for him. So, you know, just, just take this thing. It, it has every single thing listed that I would like you to buy for the, you know, for the awful, awful trans woman and the resistance, you know, just, yeah. 
and and I like that you know after the and and Luisa actually gives him a lot of the the food you know like when you hear her say two fried chickens you know like it sounds like oh you know yeah that you know sharing some fried chicken you know if both of them have some fried chicken that would you know that would be very a, a good experience for both of them but no they're both for you know Valentine so and and the you know yeah after all the times that you know that that he has complained Valentine does want to hear how does the film end and i really like the writing of the the scene with you know he he's lying there you know they've had all this stuff and he's like you know there's just one more thing we need and and I don't, I'm not going to use the, the word, but um, Luisa says, you know, I thought I was the one who was, you know, and yeah, you know, the, the you know, I'd, a film would be great. Oh, well, you know, I wish we had, you know, just, it's kind of adorable that, like, Luisa legitimately, she's, she's at this point basically accepted, you know what? I am never going to get to finish talking about this movie, and that's fine, whatever, you know. But no, now Valentin, you know, asks, no, really, what, you know, what was the, the ending? So that's, uh, yeah. See, uh, yeah, and, and later, you know, they get more food and even candy. And I, I like the, the line, why do you always need an explanation? You know, it is basically like Luisa lives mostly by her feelings and Valentin lives mostly by his, you know, the, the political, um, yeah, the, the politics. And very sweet with the, when they tenderly touch each other and I, I appreciate the the you know when when Luisa helps Valentine after the the poison takes its toll on his body you know he more than once says uh, doesn't it disgust you as Luisa attends to him and you know after yeah, after she's she's taken care of him, which is of course also very you know traditionally feminine. The the idea of you know taking care of another person, which like I know I'm not I'm not gonna claim to be some hyper masculine alpha, but like I've taken care of of someone who who need like who was who was sick. Like it's not. If again, if you're a man, if you're a yeah, if you're a man watching this right now, and you feel bad about like at some point someone you care about might need you to take care of them. You know, it's not you're not suddenly you know not going to be straight or something. Just yeah, but but yeah, and and after that, you know, then. Um, let's see. I think it's the Valentine like offers to to touch um, Luisa, and Luisa says if it doesn't disgust you, you know. So that the the kind of um, you know it it draws an explicit parallel between you know and and again that is that is some of what bigotry is. Some people when they think about a trans person. Or, 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 a, yeah. In in general, LGBTQ people, you know, they they think of something that that disgusts them, you know, and and yeah. So so I I really appreciate that it does draw that explicit um, and and kind of says that you know Luisa, the trans woman, is in some ways, the more open, tender, loving person compared to the, the cis man, you know, that, that like, you know, Luisa is, is sweet to, 
um, Valentine from the start, and Valentine, you know, uh, yeah, some he says some very very harsh things, um, including the the F slur. And so the yeah the the sex between them is not made to be erotic or like some kind of like it, it you know it it doesn't make it out to be something that there's something wrong with or anything in between these uh, extremes like honestly I wouldn't like I think if a child watched it they wouldn't have any idea what actually happened there they wouldn't. They might not think of it as, to be clear, I'm not saying that children should be watching this, at least not without, like, parents, like, you know, not because of anything trans or, or you know, transness and homosexuality and, and such are not inherently harmful for children, the, the, any more than, than cis, you know, actually, comparatively, it can be harmful for children to be forced to be cis if they actually are trans. That's there's studies that prove this, you know. But I do think some of the things are too much for children. I, I don't think children should really have to know about torture, for example. That's uh, yeah. But but the um, but but yeah. You know, it's it's. The, yeah, the movie is very careful in how it handles it. And again, I think it might be in part for the cishet audience. The, the you know They wanted the movie to have some mainstream success, uh, an appeal. But it definitely is also... I think it is, it, it's the right way for the, for the movie to, to handle it. Now... And yeah, uh, we, we see that when Valentin gets to know Luisa, he doesn't hate her. Uh, you know the the um, I think chief of police. You know I'm just going to the the um, yes, it's not the warden because the warden is the the white guy. Um, it's the the black man who is almost always in the presence of the warden you know he continues to hate Luisa uh, you know and, and to be clear you know part of that is frustration that they're not getting what they want but he's using the F slur and shouting at Luisa which the warden isn't you know the warden like I never get the sense that the warden like legitimately doesn't think that trans people should be imprisoned there, there's never really uh, you know I, d I don't know if he could do very much if he really did feel that way but I just I don't really get that sense from him um, feel free to comment if, if you think I, I misjudged him but you know but but he's he's trying to to talk to him yeah as, as more I, I suppose <clears throat> he may recognize more humanity in Louisa than the yeah the the blank man and the and the uh, let's see but but yeah you know and and it is this thing of as I mentioned in the review when you you know if you are someone who do not have empathy for trans people you know if you meet one and you actually just try to get to know them as a person you know and I don't if if I know any trans people in my personal life in in like real life I I I guess they aren't out I I don't I I might not know any trans people I think when I was a child I I had some ideas that I now realize are wrong I never hated trans people but I did used to it, it's that thing of you know the the kind of the the you know you're you're taught ideas that sound like they have empathy for them but they're not completely you know I learned a lot from from trans people on YouTube 
you know, so, yeah, I would definitely say there is, you know, I'm not saying that you as a, if you, if, if you are a trans person, I don't think you should feel any obligation to educate cishet on what it's like, you know, it, there, there's a, um, um, Let's see. There's a if if um, I, I realize that some people uh, really take issue with um, Natalie um, contra points, but she made a really great um, there. Yeah, her her video on the supposed witch trials of J.K. Rowling. You know, she has this one quote. I, I might link to the the clip in you know. But below in in the description box, but anyway, the the where she points out that you know cishet men are not expected to argue for like the the you know yeah to defend cishet relationships you know with yeah it, it's um. And yeah, she she pointed out, you know, there was that, uh, the the um, there was that uh, quote that is it is kind of a it's a misunderstanding of the the writer. Um, it's the, it's that thing of uh, um, the. Let's see. Um, yeah, the the um, and Andrea Dworkin. Uh, was misunderstood to to you know some some people say that she argued that all heterosexual sex is rape. Now, ultimately, it's a the the um, you know what she was actually arguing for was consent. And yeah, there are people who don't think that women should have should get to consent that that men should be in charge of when women have sex. You know, so but but yeah. Um, uh, Natalie pointed out that you know few heterosexual men would be you know particularly interested in trying to to you know in, in having to 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 argue to fight for the right to to have sex with with the the you know someone who's yeah the the person that you you want to have, have sex with you know so I don't think, you know, for, for sure, um, no one LGBTQ should be forced to argue for it. But the, the, um, I do think it is worth noting that a lot of the, the people who hate LGBTQ people, they've never actually just met one and had, like, there's plenty of cishet who, like, if you judge them, if if the thing you think about is who they're having sex with or what exactly they like during sex like if that's the only thing you can think of you know you might have trouble empathizing with or sympathizing with them you know but i've i've long felt that the only thing that matters as far as you know what you do sexually is consent every you know, every person who is, you know, keep, also keeping in mind that cheating is a violation of consent. If you feel compelled to cheat and you just cannot not cheat, just break up with the person instead of cheating on them. But yeah, the, the you know, as, as long, and, and that you have to be of age to consent. So, you know, and uh, animals can't consent, dead bodies can't consent, you know, but yeah. If the the as long as consent is respected, I don't care what you, and and also public sex violates consent because the people who see you have sex have not consented to that. You know, I don't think there's something wrong with being aroused by the idea, but like make sure that that it's like you know I don't I don't know I'm assuming there's probably you know ways to um, 
ways to live that out without like I, I guess if yeah if you record a, a sex tape and everyone in the the sex tape consents to sharing it you know yeah you could you could share it and and get off on the idea that other people have seen you have seen you know that kind of thing but anyway yes as long as consent is respected you can do what you want sexually and the the you know it's also just why are people why are cis hats like there's so much there are a lot of cis hats i i don't personally but there's a lot of cis hat people who are obsessed with what lgbtq people do with their genitalia and you know both like sexually and and in order to affirm their gender identity and, and these kinds of things and it's just like why they're not doing it to you like to be clear i don't want like but i've just never i i there is not a significant movement that is that is going around forcing transness or you know gay bi pan sexuality on anyone who isn't interested in it. I, I'm sure there's like some individuals or or something, but there's not a significant move. And certainly, if there were, it wouldn't. You know, if you just look at the actual goals of the the LGBTQ you know community, the the you know, yeah, it's it's. <coughs> <coughs> If you look at people who are who are who are trying to affect change in favor of LGBTQ people, there's no you know yeah. As a quick example, you know people say, oh, we can't. It's transphobes say we can't let trans people into cis. You know, it's <clears throat> it's frequently cis women's spaces like public bathrooms, uh, changing rooms for, for sports and that kind of thing, you know, claiming, oh, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna sexually assault or rape someone. That's already illegal. There's absolutely nothing. It, there's no law, like legitimately, please, if you can, put it in the comments link it or quote any law that says that it's okay to sexually assault or rape if you are LGBTQ because that's just not a thing like I realize that it's harder for a cis man to get into a public bathroom like if it's if it's legal and or they pass it's easier for a trans woman to get into a, a you know woman women space than a a cis man who isn't trying to to pass or anything pass for for female but it's still like and and that it it does cis men do sexually assault and rape cis women and trans women and sometimes it is in relatively public places you know there if if you i agree that should be fought i don't think that it's okay and there is apparently like t you know transphobes were jubilant when they discovered they actually there are a some there are a few individuals statistically it's an incredibly small number and yes i do think they should be prosecuted but yes there is a tiny amount of you know there there are some trans people who are who sexually assault or, or rape and one of them was like let's see if i remember it's been a while since i've looked at the the story but apparently if i understand correctly basically they were quoted in an article that was supposed to make all lgbtq people sound like they were you know sexual predators and it's like you found one and now you're saying that's all of them like it's just and and you know if you are transphobic and you you think oh they must all be there must be something wrong with all of them 
Do you feel that way about every minority entity? You know, sure, some do. But have you never met a member of a minority that didn't conform to the, the stereotypes? Have you never met a single person who challenged your beliefs on that? Because, yeah, the, the, yeah, anyway, um, let's see, did that cover every last thing I wanted to about that? Um, Let's see. I think it was, you know, but yeah, to be clear, I 100% agree that sexual predators, you know, we have to do what we can to prevent them from victimizing everyone, for, from, uh, yeah, from attacking anyone. You know, the, the, the method that I, uh, it's been a while since I looked at, I forget what is supposed to be the best method, um... I mean, I don't know if it's too optimistic to say that maybe if they learn enough empathy, they wouldn't do it. I, I don't. Um, but, but you know, the yeah. But that's not, like, you're not, um, like, yeah, if, if that's what you're saying, if you, if you think that we should pass laws that make it much more difficult for you know, sexual predators to, you know, attack someone, I mean, one place you could start is the Catholic Church, like any Catholic Church, the the priest should have, any any Catholic priest should have to go through a, a check to, a, a background check, I guess, to, to make sure that they, because cause that's something, I, I'm not 100% certain, I hope, they're not still doing it, but for a really long time, the Catholic Church, if they discovered, when, whenever, every single time, they discovered this priest is, is raping choir boys. Uh, 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 not only choir boys, ra raping boys, you know, pe pedophile. They would move them to a different, is it called parish? I, uh, you know, so that they could attack someone else. You know, I, I realized that they probably didn't think of it as this will make sure that they can attack someone else, but they didn't care as much about that as they cared about the name of the church. You know, they wanted, they didn't want people to think of, to, to realize how many Catholic priests were rapists, so they just moved them, you know, out of sight, out of mind. They didn't fire them. They didn't, you know, so, so, you know, but a lot of the, a lot of the people who hate LGBTQ people, you know, they don't hate Christians, and they, they know that, you know, and or know that publicly attacking religion will draw a lot of hatred, you know, and, and to be clear, if you are Catholic, I'm not saying you are supportive of it, you might, you know, maybe it's a really significant part of your identity, you know, the, the, it's, it's complicated, I'm, I'm not saying that it, you know, I've never been a believer, I don't believe in anything that cannot be proven, you know, but, so, so, you know, so, I'm not going to go around telling, you know, I did. Years ago, I would say that people should change their faith if they, you know, if, if their faith was connected to, to something that was really awful like that. But, if you are a Catholic and you don't want to, to change your, your religion, I'm not saying that you personally are in favor of these pedophile priests but the people who had power in the church they they were more worried about the name of the they they you know yeah they were more worried about that than they were about these rape survivors and yeah the the you know a lot of people when you when you use the word Catholic, 
they only think of the good things about Catholicism. So if you say we have to do this about Catholics, a lot of people aren't going to look at the details. They're going just going to hear, oh, you know, we're being persecuted. And with that, I will go back to my other notes because now I have, I believe I have said absolutely everything I had on that specific. Yes, um, the, yeah, it is legitimately a sad goodbye between uh, Valentin and Luisa. And I really appreciate that he says, don't let anyone humiliate you. And, you know, the, the thing with, uh, you know, after, you know, Va Valentin really wants him to, to get this message to the resistance. And, you know, the, the um, Luisa keeps turning it down, and finally Valentin's like, okay, you know. And then the, the you know, yeah, so when, when Luisa says, you know, there's there's something, and, and Valentin's like, oh, yeah, the, the kiss, it's okay, I'll, I'll kiss you. And Luisa says, no, the phone number, it's, it's just so sweet, I, I know, I'm, I'm, I can be super corny sometimes, but it's just so sweet, so heartening to see these two people who have such differences, you know, see them be able to, you know, actually, yeah, be, be really sweet to each other. It's, yeah. And it also feels earned, you know, like if it was just immediately, it, it would not have felt earned, but uh, yeah. And the the yeah, there's a there's a, a club. I I don't know if it's. I'm just gonna say you know, and a club for LGBTQ people. And um, let's see, Greta um, dances in in red um, and. You know, it's it's very very camp, very um, ah crap. I don't know if camp is the right. I you know, it's it's the that kind of you know, it's just it's yeah that that is something that a number of not all LGBTQ people enjoy the that kind of of dance. Um, and yeah, we see you know, Luisa is very lonely now that she's on the outside. And the waiter is very harsh with Luis. I, I don't even really want to repeat um, the words he said. I, I I guess he's trying to hurt her back um, when when she says that she's going away for a while. He assumes you've moved on to, to someone else, which is you know sadly also a a stereotype about LGBTQ people that they are very resistant or even incapable of resistant towards or incapable of uh, monogamy and it, again it's just not true there's a there are a number of gay men who don't really want to be monogamous there's also a lot of straight men who don't want to be monogamous it's really not i if i understand correctly it's really more of like a traditionally and, and stereotypically male thing than it's anything to do with LGBTQ people and you know the fact that gay like gays couldn't get married for a extremely long time like if you look at how long straight people have been able to get married now it didn't always mean the same thing but we are talking thousands of years you know in, in a lot of the world, straight people have been able to get married. You know, for a really long time, divorce wasn't a thing. So, of course, they're going to stay with the person. It's not really, you know, they don't really have an option. And, yeah, a number of gay men, honestly, and this is what I'm going to... I think a lot of straight men who are homophobic look at gay men, you know having as many partners as they want and get really really jealous because they feel like they didn't have a choice but to get married to one woman and now they they feel frustrated that they can't have sex you know because for a lot of men 
the ability to have sex with a lot of women, you know, very casual relationships, that makes them feel like they're more of a man or make, you know, yeah, feel like they have, you know, yeah. And, and so, yeah, they're, they're jealous of it. And yeah, not, you know, it's not that they want to have sex with other men, but they wish that they could have that much sex just with women instead. Now, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, after a while, Luisa does agree to meet with the resistance. And, yeah, you know, the, the, it, it's, um, You know, there's a. She is aware that the police are are following. You know, she looks up at the bridge, and they're right there. And you know, this is when she could turn around or or drop the um, was it a handkerchief or a scarf or something like that? You know, the red, which is for them to identify her, the the resistance members. I mean, you know, but but yeah, um, she. The, the um, she does willingly get the the police very close to the resistance and you know the resistance shoot her you know to to you know basically considering her uh, a traitor but right before she dies you know the 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 black man offers if you tell us the phone number that you used you know we will take you to a hospital and it's not, you know, it's it seems like Luisa either dies or or passes out from the the injury very very soon after. But you know, the Luisa at the very start of the movie would probably have, you know, there's there's some chance she would have given the information, and she chooses not to, you know, and and actually, you know, in she wanted to be the the um she she liked to imagine herself as Lenny but she ends up being Michelle you know being killed by the resistance on purpose you know for yeah consorting with the enemy and you know that yeah that in in her death she in her dying moments in the last moments we see of her, she chooses to be Michelle. Uh, when, when you know, I don't think she w they would have been able to save her. She, you know, she was shot in the torso, and and collapsed. I don't think that would have been they would have been able to save her. But she still chose to to you know and and like your your dying moments, you know that's when you really like. If you know you're about to die, that's when you can really buckle under or make a stand, you know. And, you know, that's, the, like, I don't love that the movie makes the main trans woman, you know, someone who's willing to, to you know, trick a cis man. <sighs> And, and it involves sex, you know, and and to, like, betray him for, for some, you know, cause, but at least in her dying moments, she redeems herself, you know, um, like, it's a, it's a phone number, and the direction is to, to, let's see, what was it, call, call three times, hang up shortly after, after the third time, they will call you. Like, that's easy, you know, easy to, to explain, easy to follow. She could, she, she might still have died, but she, if she really wanted a chance, you know, if she wanted to be taken to a hospital, she could have very quickly given the, the phone number, given those directions. Yeah, it would have been devastating for the resistance movement. Because um, they, at the end of the day, that's it, that's all... That appears to be the only security that there is, you know, uh, the the number and the the direction. 
yeah, they could agree to meet someplace in public and and go with and and maybe, you know, yeah, it, it, it could be really devastating for the resistance movement. And, you know, at the start of the movie, Luisa is like so romantic, you know, dying for the love of a person, to, you know, despite the politics. And, you know, here at the end, she chooses... She chooses politics over her own life, at the very least, you know. But, but yeah, the, there was a, a while where, like, stories about LGBTQ people were told, as, especially trans women, were told as the, the you know, this notion of they're, they're trying to trick someone, that they'll rape them, and they'll, they'll betray them, this kind of thing, you know, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that today there are, you know, um, Boys Don't Cry isn't saying, you know, like, I suppose you could make an argument that some would, you know, some, some would say, well, he should have told her right away that he wasn't born a man, uh, 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 that he was assigned male at birth, but... You know that's that's basically the mo the most you could say, and the the you know yeah it's uh, he's not trying um I, f I forget the the name but I'll have it momentarily it feels disrespectful to not say it the Hillary Swank character Brandon Tina you know wasn't looking to to hurt anyone. He just wanted to live the way that he wanted to, and he actually, it's worth noting, he does not make a move sexually on the the Chloe Savigny character until it's clear that she has consented. You know, he, he has a lot more respect for her than others do. You know, others do, you know, basically think of her as, oh, you know, I can, you know, doesn't matter if she wants to or not. That like they'll get angry if she doesn't immediately like go with them for like right after meetings. Yeah. Now, yeah, and it's also really really harsh that they dump Luisa's body when they realize they won't get any information, and then the write up really you know hides the truth um, and. That's the, you know, I don't, maybe at the time, maybe in 1985, it was beneficial. I don't, as, as far as I understand, I, again, I'm not trying to speak for the movement. I'm, I'm trying to relate information I've, I've gathered from watching, you know, as far as I understand, t today, it's not particularly wanted by the LGBTQ community t for, you know, stories that end in tragedy that are about. LGBTQ people, you know, I, I believe the, um, is it called bury your gays, bury your trans, some, something like that, in a trope, uh, you know, but yeah, not, in 1985, it might have been the, the, yeah, and, uh, you know, um, Vincent also, Valentine, wow, Valentine also, yeah, ADHD, um, can't, can't try medication, it may, I, I tried once, made it worse. Anyway, um, Valentin, um, you know, also dies tragically, you know, and, yeah, basically, you know, he's given enough, um, intentionally, uh, the, the, um, uh, nurse, I guess, or doc, I, I, yeah, I don't mean any disrespect, but the, the man, you know, he gives him enough for it to kill um, Valentin intentionally. And he he slips into, into death, slips into a dream where Marta comes and, and gets him. And it's, again, it's just, it really, really, really hits emotionally. The the dream of, you know, she comes in and lead, leads him by the hand out of, you know, and they just run out of the, the 
the prison and just so so sweet. And the the uh, what's it called? Then there's the um, yeah, and and it ends with them on the on the beach where the the Spider Woman was before, you know. But it is clearly Marta because she's wearing the dress that she wore in the in the prison. But you know that also tells us that when um, when Valentine was told about this incredibly beautiful woman and the Spider Woman, he imagined them looking like Marta. You know, the, the when he and and it you know it has a lot to say about like when we're being told stories in in general and like even if yeah when you watch a movie like if you try to you know we're always gonna it's it's very common for for us to for for a viewer to try to think well what happened right before that scene what happened right after kind of thing and the things that we picture will be very informed about our personal kind of you know thing so so yeah um that is it for the first spoiler section that brings us to the second one notes taken before watching and let's yeah, so some critic quotes. Take the two leads, their mindsets, attitudes, and overall summary and what sorts of people they are is put across in a very basic, very effective manner, linked to their bodies. Valentine is a political person. He's sweaty, rough, unshaven, well-built. His cellmate is William Hurts, Luisa, an effeminate, shaven, thin, softly cross-spoken. Uh, yeah, yeah, softly spoken. Someone that basks in the glory of being able to recite meaty descriptions of old romance films they've seen many a times. The sorts of films that come across as silly to some, but glorious in their themes, ideas, and content to others. Consider the plot point that becomes apparent towards the middle part of Kiss the Spider Woman, and how all is not what it seems, and how easy it would be to demonize certain types of people as nasty, deceiving types that come across as one thing, but are actually just after some vital information you might know of. Consider how on one hand you might see the second act twist as rendering of those of certain type of enemy, how the film fleshes out its enemy, turning them into a mournful and regretful figures later come to act on their own. And let's see. Yeah, and the the um, this is more of the critic quote from the the review about the the um, male tenderness with increased familiarity and understanding. Emotional tenderness eventually translates to physical tenderness as well. I felt like that would have been a spoiler to get into in the review itself. I, I realized that I mentioned in the review. Oh, you know, there might be some sexuality, but, you know, in the film itself, the, the, the waiter, you know, you, it sounds like, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, yeah, you, you might think that the waiter was the person that there was some kind of, you know, sexual, so that's actually the thing, I'm not 100% certain if Luisa was with anyone at all, like, it, the, the, um, you know, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that there's some kind of virtue in abstinence. Um, especially not saying that you should be abstinent just because you're LGBTQ. But like, you know, the the, you know, Luisa says, you know, anyone who has seen, anyone who's read a paper or seen the news has heard that I was with, you know, a, a minor, but the, the, yeah, you know, when, when she actually talks about the waiter, I'm, I'm sorry, I think the waiter does have a name, Gabrielle, when she talks about Gabrielle, like she does, if I recall, she, yeah, she specifically says that they ended up never actually having sex, but yeah, you know, Luisa went to that same place over and over, you know, maybe someone at that restaurant saw, hey, wow, she is always talking to that waiter. Oh, is this, you know, and went to the police and said, you know, and, and the police, you know, dictatorship, 
you know, fa fascist police do not need very much of an excuse. Just, you know, if you tell them this person belongs to a group that you're against, yeah, they're going to put them in prison regardless of, yeah. And, um, yes, yeah, so as far as I can tell, yeah, this person is at least um, empathetic towards LGBTQ. Kiss of the Spider Woman does occupy some significant historical spot, though, as perhaps, perhaps the first gay movie to be recognized and celebrated by the mainstream media. But as the LGBTQ movie review site www.popcornq.com asks, do we really need another movie about... Okay, so because this person has empathy for him, I'm going to quote directly, about a gay man whose straight object of desire takes pity and gives him a mercy bonk. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, I, I will admit I don't know that much about, you know, LGBTQ cinema. Um, yeah, I agree. That really does sound like just, that must be very, very disheartening to, to over and over get that kind of, like, I get some people consider that, like, romantic, but that does sound very, like, ideally you want like a happy mutual relationship between two people who are both attracted to each other instead of I do really like the the phrasing mercy bonk though that's yeah and let's see yeah and and the um, let's see and yeah another critic you know describing the film hurt steadily succeeds in winning friendship with Julia but at the same time she falls in love with Julia, gives no useful intelligence to the the captors. And, and yeah, I, I do think it is very, very, you know, just, yeah. I, I you know, I, I did see one person saying that, you know, the, the last scenes, the, the shooting and, and this kind of thing didn't really work. And I, I don't know what makes a good ending to, to this uh, I, I, um, or, or what would make for a, a better ending, but the, the, um, yeah, I, like, like I said, I, I certainly, I appreciate the, the romantic aspects and the fact that, you know, despite the, the deception, you know, um, Louisa does get to redeem herself, uh, the, you know, they're, they're at the end. Um, and, and yeah, I, I do like that, you know, there at the end, it is essentially a reversal, um, you know, for, for most of the movie, you know, Valentine is the one who's like very worried about like political reality and like life or death when, you know, in, in connection to resistance and in fighting the fascist state and, Yet it's Luisa who dies, you know, at yeah, at the hands of the fascist state because of you know proximity to the the or, or yeah, technically it's the resistance people who shoot her, but you know they they you know they wouldn't have if not for the presence of you know officers of the state and. Despite Luisa spending the entire movie, you know, in these romantic dreams about the, the, oh, right, I, I should say, I realize that it's the first time we see Marta that we realize that um, Valentine imagines uh, Lenny looking like Marta. I, it's, I didn't mean to make it sound like it's only at the end of the movie that we realize, um, but, but yeah, the, the, um, uh, yes, so the, um, crap, right, I swear, I'll, I'll think of it again, the, um, what was it, there was a, um, ah, let's see, the, the, yes, uh, Luisa spends the the movie in in these romantic dreams, uh, you know, inspired by movies and such. But it's 
Valentin, who in his death escapes into, uh, you know, this, this romantic dream, which is partially informed by his love for Marta, and partially by this vision of the, the spider woman, the, the, the beach, uh, you know, so, yeah, it's, it's, um, both of the, you know, Luisa was able to give Valentine some, some, a, a dream to go out on, which, you know, he really deserved. He, he fought hard. And Valentine is able to, you know, make Luisa appreciate the the fight. You know, so so the yeah, and and again, I don't love that it's the the trans woman who's painted as you know who at least in parts of the movie come across as as not really accepting reality, kind of you know accepting the political reality of the situation. But the the um, you know it it is this thing of you know yeah like I like I said in the review even if you don't think that what you're doing like if if you think that your the way you're living your life is fine well if the people in power think that you deserve you know to go to jail if they if they hate you it might not be enough that you are you know nothing we actually see like we're told that Luisa seduced a teenage boy but we never see her doing like you know she she the the she's willing to to deceive uh, Valentine for for a lot of the movie, but that's so she can go, you know, help her mother. It's it's not just this this kind of selfish, you know. And the the um, yeah, you know, she it's like she is capable of sharp words, but she never like physically attacks anyone, and, and I realize, you know, in part that is the thing of, you know, well, as a woman she wouldn't attack anyone, but even so, you know, yeah, like, by the end of this movie, certainly, you know, if you only watch half of it, and, and you just think, oh, she's just deceptive, you know, then you might leave the movie really not liking this trans woman, but then I, there's you know, hopefully people watch the entire movie. And and certainly it's not only at that point that you realize that she's a trans woman, so I suppose the only people likely to stop at that point are trans people who worry that the rest of the movie is going to hate them. So hopefully that doesn't happen much. But yeah, by the end of the movie, you, you understand where Luisa is coming from and you realize that, you know, she wasn't perfect but she wasn't evil, you know, she's not one of the Nazis in the propaganda film, she's not the, the you know, the really hateful police chief, the, the you know, yeah, the, the... One thing, I didn't, I didn't end up writing this down anywhere, but maybe I'm just somehow missing it, but having watched it now twice, when Luisa talks to the warden, you know, the, the, um, Luisa says, no, um, Valentin hasn't told me who the man, who the political prisoner is, you've got him in a hood, and, you know, the police chief says, why, why would you have him in a hood, and the warden says, standard procedure for political prisoners, and the, you know, police, uh, yeah, Secret Police Chief says, make sure he isn't wearing a hood next time, and they agree on that. Did I somehow miss it? I don't remember seeing a person being led in a hood into the jail. Like, there was a person who was clearly tortured. They weren't, they weren't wearing a hood, and it wasn't um, a medical. 
anyway, I, I feel like, did they actually, did they cut that part out? I mean, maybe, maybe it was necessary to cut out, but it just, it felt a little weird that the, the, like, they specifically talk, they, they, they have multiple lines of dialogue about how the political prisoner was wearing a hood. I don't know, maybe I, maybe I just missed it, but I don't, having watched it now twice, I don't remember seeing a, you know, in both of these viewings, I thought that, like, what, what are they talking about? We, we didn't see, we did see a new political prisoner, but they, their face wasn't covered. We saw their face, and we could tell that they had been tortured. Yeah, anyway, um, but yeah, so that is it for this video, so let me know in the comments um, what you know, are, are there specific, um, let's see, I guess I should say, um, yes, do you, what do you think of William Hurt's performance? Do you think that it should have been someone else playing the role? Do you think that he made it too exaggerated? Uh, you know, that, that kind of thing. And if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, one talking about the most recent episode available to me of the True Lies streaming show, as well as The Clearing and the most recent episode that I've personally gotten around to watching of Scream Queens. Once um, Disney Plus puts up more current um, Star Wars or MCU content, I will also do videos talking about that. Recently reviewed thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalogs. We'll catch my next week. I hope you enjoyed watching. As I enjoyed watching and recording, I'll catch you next time. I I have not yet done my video on Scream Queens for this week. I am going to try to do it uh, either today or tomorrow. I I do intend to do it. So yeah, catch you at some other point.